Dharmendra and team PSG for having me here. This is a very, very controversial topic. So what I've done is actually sifted through all the evidence that is available on metformin and let us see if we can reach a consensus on how safe is metformin in pregnancy. Now, um, since we have a lot of OB guides also here, so I'm just going to give you a background on metformin. We know when it comes to type 2 diabetes, metformin, I think, is one of the most successful drugs. Pleiotropic effects that it gives, we use it even for PCOS, we use it in obesity, we're using it in cancer. And then there are no major severe adverse effects. And the cost is so so cheap that it has positioned metformin as one of the drugs with best risk benefit ratio when it comes to type 2 diabetes. Now in pregnancy, we know that as the pregnancy hormones come into effect, insulin resistance contributes to gestational diabetes or worsening of hyperglycemia even in a pre-existing diabetic. So that is why metformin being an insulin sensitizer does look like a very good option when it comes to pregnancy. And therefore, a lot of studies have been investigating metformin right from GDM to PCOS and even maternal obesity, which I'm going to take you through now uh, to see whether it is safe to give metformin. We all know it is a biguanide anti-diabetic works through different mechanisms, primarily an insulin sensitizer, also stimulating GLP-1 release, inhibits lipolysis, reduces lipotoxicity, reduces hepatic glucose production and facilitates peripheral glucose uptake and utilization. Now on a molecular level, it works by activating hepatic AMP kinases, leading to a reduction in acetyl-CoA carboxylase activity, reduces fatty acid oxidation, increases peripheral glucose uptake which means it is an insulin sensitizer now at the cellular level and this is very important metformin being a positively charged molecule is transported across the mitochondrial membrane by organic cation transporters now why i'm talking about this is because in when it comes to pregnancy placenta expresses many isoforms of octs and therefore metformin readily crosses placenta thereby raising the concern whether it is safe or not. Now, we do not yet know whether the human embryo also expresses these organic cation transporters, but studies in the pre-implantation human embryos have shown that they have very low mitochondrial content and therefore they may be unresponsive to metformin, may be making it a drug that can potentially be considered a little safe in pregnancy, maybe in the beginning and I'll take you through that data also. Investigators luckily have not been able to demonstrate increased embryo activity or congenital malformations after metformin administration at doses that are usually administered to stimulate maternal liver AMPK and therefore it seems to be a safer bet. Now when it comes to any oral drug in pregnancy, what do we want? Either it should not cross placenta. So that's safe. Otherwise, if it is crossing placenta, it should not cause fetal harm. That means no hypoglycemia, no hyperinsulinemia and no teratogenicity. Then maybe you can use it in pregnancy. So let's evaluate metformin from that point of view. Like I said, metformin readily crosses placenta. Fetal serum levels approximate maternal concentrations. Again, like I said, it is non-teratogenic. It is excreted in breast milk. Estimated infant dose is less than 0.3% of the mother's weight adjusted dose. However, in a breastfed infant's plasma, metformin has not been detected and no adverse events have been noted in breastfed events. And that is why in these infants also metformin can be given in lactation. However, the MIX study was a landmark study that actually showed that metformin could be used in GDM and was found to be pretty safe. However, most of the studies eventually have been showing that although the neonatal hypoglycemias and maternal weight gain is much less if the lady is given metformin, but there is a slight signal for prematurity. Now, this was the landmark mix study investigating metformin in GDM. And mind it, this, these were GDMs diagnosed after 20, during 24 to 28 weeks. This is a very old study, clearly showing that there was no increase in any adverse perinatal outcomes. And therefore, it established the safety of using metformin in GDM. So basically, like I said, metformin, the MIG study showed is safe, can be used in pregnancy. However, we know that as the insulin resistance keeps going up, 46% of women in the metformin group, even in the MIG study, did need insulin for their treatment. However, the acceptability is better because of the oral administration. 
metformin does show less weight gain in most mothers reduction in severe hypoglycemia and few studies have shown a reduction in pih with metformin however i will take you through some other studies which show contrary to what we are talking about right now so this is a meta analysis comparing metformin versus insulin again showing that the maternal and fetal outcomes were more or less similar so no major uh, harm seen with metformin and this is a compilation of all the different studies some studies that we are seeing now are showing a signal for small for gestational age as well as prematurity in women given metformin these are all the studies that have shown although metformin seems to be pretty safe in terms of no adverse neonatal outcomes but preterm births definitely seem to be more what happens to children of gdm mothers who are exposed to metformin during pregnancy at 18 months children started getting heavier and taller by 2 years larger skin folds by 9 years again a signal of adiposity larger weight circumference larger waist height ratio larger bmis and triceps skin fold and this is a meta analysis of about 10 rcts in women with pcos or gdm who were given metformin so 778 children who were exposed to metformin and again at 9 years these children were heavier than their controls so friends although metformin is safe and effective it is linked to less weight gain in pregnancy lower risk of neonatal hypoglycemia compared to insulin however you know that most patients eventually do need insulin small for gestational age and preterm births raise an eyebrow and need to be further looked at now this is an important rct by valdes that actually looked at uh, role of metformin in preventing gdm in women who have pre existing insulin resistance so here again metformin did not reduce the incidence of gdm so you know we had the notion that since it's a sensitizer if a woman is at a high risk you can probably give her metformin and the number of conversions to gdm will reduce but that did not happen in this study and then again like i said a lot of meta analysis and studies are showing smaller neonates with acceleration of postnatal growth resulting in a higher bmi in childhood to children who were exposed to metformin now obesity is another situation let's move away from diabetes for a little while we know obesity in pregnancy also is associated with a higher risk of pregnancy loss preterm deliveries hypertension preeclampsia gdm fetal macrosomia and increased risk of stillbirths now some studies have explored using metformin in obese normal glycemic pregnant women slight reduction in maternal weight gain the gestational weight gain was less in women who were given metformin during pregnancy i'm talking about the normal glycemic obese women however gi intolerance is a big problem with metformin as it is in pregnancy they have lot of gastritis so metformin few of them are not able to tolerate and the risk to develop gdm again was not reduced in obese women as well so if you are trying to use metformin to reduce conversion of an obese woman who is normal glycemic to gdm that did not really happen in most of these studies metformin does not reduce the incidence of lga newborns also however it reduced the risk of neonatal icu admissions in a few studies so again swinging both sides this is a very important study empovar now this is a study that looked at metformin effects on maternal and fetal outcomes in obese pregnant women this is this came out very recently uh 2015 and again you know it explored the insulin size sensitizing effect and again the study did not really show much benefits in terms of conversion to gdm grow trial was again another study in obese women bmi more than 25 who were given metformin at 10 to 20 weeks of gestation to prevent its conversion to gdm and again it did not really show prevention of gdm so again clearly telling you that maybe you know you need to be a little more cautious the beneficial effects of metformin on maternal and neonatal health when used in gestational obesity even in normal glycemic women did not really prevent conversion to gdm now what happens in pcos we know pcos is again a high risk factor for gdm pcos is associated with a 3 to 4 fold increased in pih preeclampsia three fold increase in conversion to gdm again increased risk of premature deliveries more miscarriages in pcos and therefore we feel that metformin should be continued in pcos also we want to continue metformin to prevent conversion of these pcos women to gdm so that's again another uh, area where metformin seems to be a good candidate however 
a lot of studies that I'm going to show you. Again, they showed no effect of metformin on prevalence of GDM and preeclampsia and a slight reduction in preterm delivery. This was a 2010 famous study by Vanke et al. Again, another RCT from the same group showed a reduction in the risk of late miscarriages and preterm birth with no difference in the prevalence of GDM. So again, GDM conversion not really affected. So, uh, this was again a very recent study clearly showing that prevalence of GDM and preeclampsia pre did not really come down if metformin was being used. However, look at this, neonatal head circumference was larger in the metformin group compared to the placebo group. So, although it did not really cause harm, but the child again has a risk towards adiposity future life. So, this is studies PCOS where uh, metformin was used again showing you gestational weight gain was less. However, Large for gestational age and small for gestational age were not investigated. Preterm births, essentially similar, GDM, no benefit. Now, what happens to the children of PCOS mothers who are given metformin? Again, infants heavier than those in the placebo group. However, at 4 years of age, both males and females maintained a higher weight. Again, by 8 years follow-up in different studies, higher glucose levels and a stronger trend towards elevated systolic BP and a high LDL cholesterol still being investigated. So, this is outcomes of pregnancies under metformin after long-term follow-up of these children and you can clearly see that uh, a slight signal towards catch-up growth. MITI trial, a very landmark trial that came out recently and we thought this will tell us the final verdict on whether metformin can be used in women with type 2 diabetes. So, this was primarily uh, looking at women who had type 2 diabetes and they were given metformin. No significant difference between groups in the primary composite outcome of neonatal mortality and serious morbidity. So, metformin pretty safe. Metformin treated women and their infants had several benefits, better glycemic control, Lower insulin requirement, less gestational weight gain, fewer cesarean births. However, again one problem, small for gestational age was more. So again in MITI what we see is a higher proportion of small for gestational age infants and these children are being followed up. We have a MITI kids available now which is a 2 years follow up of the children in the MITI study who were given metformin. Again. No difference between groups in the mean BMI Z scores. Metformin was not a predictor of BMI at uh, 24 months of age. However, although the anthropometrics were almost similar in the metformin versus the non-metformin group, so seems that maybe this study, once we have more and more data of these MITI kids, will actually tell us whether obesity develops in these children later on or not. So we just have two-year data available. Fetal exposure again not major, no major congenital anomalies seen. So what are the recommendations when it comes to metformin use? Well, if you look at the western guidelines, the ADA, this is the latest 2024 document that just came about a week back. Again tells you that when it comes to women with GDM, of course lifestyle and MNT is very important. However, if she needs pharmacotherapy, insulin is the preferred medication because it does not cross placenta as is very safe. Metformin and gliburide should not be used as first line agents. However, metformin may be used in certain situations and I will bring you to that in a little while. Even in PCOS women, ADA clearly says there is no evidence based need to continue metformin in such patients because it has not demonstrated benefit in preventing spontaneous abortions or GDM. So, even when it is being used in PCOS to induce ovulation, we know it is used to induce ovulation. ADA recommends stopping metformin at the end of first trimester. Now, this is again very debatable and we can discuss this in a little while. Metformin was associated with a lower risk of neonatal hypoglycemia and less maternal weight gain than insulin in systemic reviews. So, metformin has been considered first line by various authorities such as Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine, FIGO, NHS, etc. However, WHO, the Australian OBS Gynae Society, the IDF, the Canadian Guidelines, the American Diabetes Association, ACE and the Ministry of Health Government of India currently recommend using metformin in settings where insulin administration has logistic or compliance issues. So, some women with GDM who require medical therapy but because of cost factor or a language barrier or lack of comprehension, inability to understand the complexities associated with insulin administration or cultural influences may not be able to use insulin or do not have access to insulin. So there, 
Oral agents like metformin may be an alternative after discussing the known risks and benefits. However, where you should not use metformin at all is where you have a potential for IUGR or acidosis in the setting of placental insufficiency. Metformin should not be used in women who have hypertension, preeclampsia or you are seeing a IUGR or a small for gestational age. So, if on your ANC scan you see a lag in the fetal growth and if you have given her metformin, please stop it immediately. That could lead to a small for gestational age or an IUGR or even a preterm birth. Dipsy also is very clear. If the pregnant woman is not willing or cannot take insulin, Metformin can be recommended. Starting dose is 500 milligrams twice a day. You can go up to 2 grams per day. However, if she is not controlled even on maximum tolerable dose of metformin and MNT, of course, you need to start insulin. All these studies have talked about metformin. Now, this is again a very important Nordic register based cohort study that looked at the risk of major congenital malformations in pregnancies where metformin was continued all through pregnancy, again showing no increased risk of congenital or even cardiac malformations seen in children who were exposed to metformin. So, maybe it is not really causing too much harm. Clue study group again, this was again maternal pregnancy exposure to metformin. They looked at the long term and the uh, outcomes in the uh, women exposed to metformin. Again, this is a Finland study clearly showing that exposure to metformin versus insulin was not associated with an increased risk of long term outcomes in any of their analysis. However, small for gestational age was again seen in this study in children who were exposed to metformin. Eventually, we know most patients will need insulin. A lot of studies have shown and uh, Dr. Fatak very beautifully told you where to start insulin. So, if there is glucose levels not on control, fasting continuously more than 110, postprandials exceeding 140, you picked up GDM very early in pregnancy. If she has a BOH, past history of GDM, polyhydramnios, macrosomia, renal hepatic dysfunction, GI intolerance, or if it is a risky pregnancy, IUGR, placental insufficiency, PIH, all these cases, you should not use metformin, you should immediately start insulin. So, a lot of studies I am showing you here, uh, which we have actually reviewed to see if there is anything, even uh, there was a uh, signal of neurocognitive developmental problems with metformin, but this is one study that clearly cleared metformin. So, no neurocognitive developmental side effects or adverse events seen in children exposed to metformin. So, a uh, preliminary report of 283 children. Uh, this again found males exposed to metformin in this study had a higher BMI growth tra trajectory. So, some adiposity signal coming in there. So, all these studies clearly showing children uh, having a increased signal of um, catch up growth if they are exposed to metformin. The FIGO guidelines therefore say that if the lifestyle doesn't is failing and insulin cannot be given, metformin may be given. This is the DIPSI guidelines and a lot of DIPSI seniors are here. Uh, this is the latest draft that got published in IJDDC. You can see here. This again tells you that when you are in a standard care setting, the best of amenities available, everything available, insulin is the golden standard. Insulin should be used. However, in limited care, if insulin cannot be given or is not available in the Indian experience and this is what Dr. Seshia always says what is good for conception should be good to continue during pregnancy and metformin may be continued throughout pregnancy and this is what the DIPSI says if insulin cannot be used and again I talked about the dosing and everything however DIPSI also acknowledges that most of the studies the risk of prematurity seems to be a slightly increased in metformin and uh, again in the third trimester if the lady is on insulin and there is extreme degree of insulin resistance and needs high doses of insulin there may be metformin can be used as an add-on to take care of the insulin resistance what is hot from the oven just came last week you know this is just three four days old the emerge study that came in in JAMA and I'll show you another study now emerge trial looked at women with GDM who were given metformin right at the diagnosis because till now the dictum was if there is mild dysglycemia in GDM, give her two weeks of MNT and lifestyle and still not controlled, then you initiate pharmacotherapy. So, this is one study that said the moment you pick up GDM, put her on metformin and see if things are better. So, this is one study that showed that early initiation of metformin, does it reduce insulin initiation and does it bring down the fasting hyperglycemia? 
so this study showed that it, okay the primary composite outcome was not significantly different that means neither did it actually reduce the need for insulin nor did it uh, actually bring down the fasting hyperglycemia in a statistically significant p value so early treatment with metformin was not found to be superior to placebo for the composite primary outcome in the emerge study so it did not confirm statistical superiority of giving metformin right at diagnosis of gdm however again there was an increase in the proportion of infants weighing less than 2.5 kg so again a signal for sga in the emerge trial is seen if you read the fine print so the key point that was asked in the emerge study was does early metformin initiation improve glycemic control does it reduce insulin use in pregnancy in people who are diagnosed with gdm and the answer was no it did not reduce the occurrence of the combination of either a fasting plasma glucose on target or need for insulin so again sga signal is something that you need to watch out for mompod mompod just came out very very recently it's just a few days old again here this was pregnant women between 18 to 45 years of age with a singleton gestation where metformin was given at 10 weeks of pregnancy and what did they want to do they wanted to see either women with pre existing diabetes will they need insulin if they are started metformin so early or women diagnosed with gestational diabetes so what they did here was they wanted to see if it was safe so they added metformin to insulin so women who had pre existing diabetes even at 10 weeks they added metformin and it was used in addition to insulin so after enrollment one is to one distribution was done what did they show metformin added to insulin did not reduce the frequency of the composite adverse neonatal outcome no significant differences were observed in the pre specified secondary outcomes that means maternal hypoglycemia or neonatal fat mass so when it comes to maternal bmi timing of diabetes diagnosis timing at enrollment metformin did not really give them a benefit however delivery of a large for gestational age infant was seen to be little less in the mompod study and this study was actually stopped prematurely because no difference emerged between the metformin plus insulin versus the insulin alone group so again if we are looking at that benefit we did not really see it here so what was the answer it did not reduce the composite adverse neonatal outcomes but resulted in fewer lga infants so using metformin plus insulin to treat pre existing type 2 diabetes or gestational diabetes diagnosed early in pregnancy did not really reduce these outcomes and the reduction in odds for lga is something that needs to be observed with metformin so this was an editorial that came out in the latest edition of jama trying to and you know th this is how people play around with words so the editorial i've shown you the details of what emerge showed and what mompod showed but the editorial was strictly biased towards using metformin because the author is one of the authors in the mompod so if you read the uh, uh, the editorial it says yes metformin is very safe can be given mig they've quoted mig and they've said yes it is very safe so what it says is what do you learn from emerge see that he says we learned that this strategy is safe because it did not cause harm fine it did not cause benefit but it did not cause harm so anybody's conclusion what you want to learn from it it reduced infant birth weight fewer people receiving metformin needed insulin that's the fine print and in the mompod again so what did we learn while infants were smaller in the metformin group in mompod it did not really translate into fewer cesarean deliveries so to conclude hyperglycemia in pregnancy or gdm is associated with an increased risk of maternal and fetal complications guidelines recommend optimum glycemic control to prevent the risk of maternal or fetal complications and improve outcomes insulin therapy remains the gold standard for managing hyperglycemia in pregnancy in patients who need pharmacotherapy however metformin has been largely found safe for use in pregnancy except where you have some concerns for small for gestational age or prematurity in infants and a tendency towards an increased bmi in follow up of these infants in various studies however if the lady cannot use insulin cannot accept insulin cannot take insulin then metformin may be used 
where insulin is not acceptable or possible and maybe the final verdict still is not out and we need more long term data to actually declare it is safe but again let me tell you dr sesha uh, is very very clear on using metformin because he says we a lot of obsgynees have been using it and they've not really seen major harm so it is anybody's guess and i would not like to say uh, what is right what is wrong it is anybody's guess so all the evidence that i am showing you is science thank you